Hi guys, my name is Billy Mason. I've been invited to share with you an audio abstract from a recent publication titled uh, Resistance Training Priming Activity Improves Upper Body Power Output in Rugby Players Implications for Game Day Performance. Before I get into it, I would like to thank the co-authors on this paper, uh, Nick Ball, Christos Argus and Ben Norcott. Uh, their input and support throughout the entire process is greatly appreciated, so thank you guys. Okay, so moving on, what we'll do is I'll just run through um, briefly what the paper is about. So what we've done is we've implemented a priming activity um, in the form of resistance training, uh, two and a half hours before a would-be or hypothetical rugby match. Um, we had 13 state-level rugby players all competing in the National Under-20s competition, volunteer for the study, um, and they used a, a counterbalance crossover design. So all the participants did both the intervention and the control trial. So um, in regards to the procedures, um, we had on the day when subjects arrived at the testing facility, they completed a readiness to perform questionnaire, as well as two maximal um, effort repetitions of counter movement jump and the bench throw. So these were our assessments of lower and upper body power. Um, following the initial measures, the control trial went about game day, their typical game day routine, whereas the intervention trial underwent a resistance training priming activity. So this included um, four sets of three repetitions of a band resisted back squat, as you can see in the image there, as well as four sets of three repetitions of band resisted uh, bench press. Um, following on from that, they then also went about their typical uh, game day routines. So what we found as a result of this study, um, following the primary activity, we observed a small decrease in counter movement jump peak power um, and also peak force. We also observed a trivial decrease in counter movement jump peak velocity. Um, in comparison with the bench press, we found a large increase in peak force, um, a moderate increase in peak power and a small increase in peak velocity. So these findings suggest that an upper body primary activity was, activity was effective in improving upper body power output. However, um, the primary activity did not lead to positive changes in lower body power output. So a potential reason for this we've, uh, we put forward, it may have been the lack of the load lifted with the back squat um, during the lower body portion of the primary activity. So the load at the top of the lift, both the back squat and bench press, were roughly 47 kilos. However, following initial measures, it was clear to see that the force produced um, in the counter movement jump was uh, significantly higher than that of the bench throw. So um, an interesting finding, which also helped to, I guess, support this claim, um, was a very large positive relationship was observed between band tension in the back squat and changes in counter movement jump peak power. Um, so this highlights the possibility of the increasing the force output by adding additional weight or by increasing band tension in the back squats may lead to a greater priming response. Um, so in regards to practical applications from this paper, um, an upper body priming activity may be implemented to improve upper body power output. However, further investigation to lower body priming activities should be conducted before being implemented as part of the ga uh, game day preparation. Um, a few limitations with this paper. Uh, one is that this study has removed all other game day strategies commonly used to prepare athletes for competition. So what I mean by this is that we had the participants predominantly sitting during the two and a half hours prior to the hypothetical match or between the, uh, the testing, um, whereas typical game day preparation would be much different. That would also incorporate other warm-ups, um, coach talks, drills, that kind of thing. So with this said, implementing a priming activity alongside other pre-game strategies may lead to different outcomes. Um, and finally, just worth noting with this, um, we have only looked at power output. So knowing there are many more contributing variables when discussing rugby performance, I would suggest assessing other measures of performance following a priming activity as well. Um, so whilst priming activity seems to um, lead to an improvement in performance in upper body power output, could have an influence either negative or positive on other markers of, of rugby performance. Uh, okay, so that's it for me, guys. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Once again, thanks to my co-authors and also to Rob Pacey for the opportunity to share our research. If you have any questions regarding the paper, please feel free to contact me via email um, at billy.mason at live.com.au. Thank you.